I'm really excited about today's video because so many of you are wondering about how to manipulate your frames for winter survival. And today we are going to look at the same hive we inspected last time that was failing. And I wanted to combine it, but a lot of you said, no, let's, uh, let's try to save it. I want to combine it with another hive. But a lot of you had uh, good suggestions, which was one of the ways I thought about doing it was just to feed the heck out of it, see if it would make it. And you know what? My go-to method would be to combine it with another hive, but we're gonna try the other method, which I don't think is always the best, but we won't know until we try it. And it's gonna give you guys more insight on what you should do to combine and manipulate your frames. And uh, sometimes, you know, you're going into winter, maybe with two deeps, and the bottom deep may have some brood in it, and some top, the top deep may have some brood also. The question is, do you put all that brood in the bottom deep and move all your honey to the top deep? So we're going to talk about that today, but uh, this is going to be an exciting time. Let's jump out there right now into that hive. I'm going to teach you guys how to arrange your frames best for winter survival. Let's get started. All right, we're going to work pretty fast on this hive today because uh, I'm trying to do a little bit of uh, feeding, community feeding, just enough to get bees to go away from the bee yard so they won't rob this hive while we have it open. David Bobblehead is here with his new hat and veil. Hey, look at that. And as always, he's encouraging you guys to please subscribe. Appreciate it. All right, before we open this up, let's get our, uh, let's get our thoughts together. We're gonna put everything down in this bottom deep, all 10 frames. And so we're gonna have to choose the best five out of the top, the best five out of the bottom. That's what we're gonna be doing today. And it's gonna be working as fast as we can, making sure we don't kill the queen, injure the queen and all the frame manipulation. You'll see robbing pick up really fast. And that's why we're gonna go as fast as we can. So I think our plan will be is to take the top deep off, set it aside over here, and then pull off five frames out of here that are, that are not filled out or not acceptable. Then we'll just turn over to the other side really quick, pull out five frames and drop it into the white one. That'll give us a chance to paint this one over winter. So let's not even open up the top. All right, let's see if we can pull this off. Get a little smoke between the two boxes. These bees are a bit feisty. Let's put it right on top of the Burns feeder over here. That'll give us a little ventilation. All right, good. That, that box over here is totally contained. Now let's get five frames out of here. So we're gonna get the five frames out over here against the wall because we wanna consolidate to 10 frames. This hive has a lot of small hive beetles. I did bring some beetle traps. That's one of the things. So what we have to do after consolidating is we actually have to put some beetle traps in and we have to feed them. That's the only way we're gonna get this hive built up going into winter is to feed them. I got three frames out. We'll have to remember there's four frames out. We're gonna get this last one out here. This one could be a keeper if there's no good ones um, in the one that we just took off. All right, so let's get organized here. So here's a frame that I don't like because it's wonky comb. And this is gonna be a chance for us to repair this, scrape it off, re-wax it. So we've got one better than that one. Set that aside for now. Let's take a look at this one. Again, another one with wonky comb on it, but it's not terrible. Yeah, it's not acceptable. Let's get rid of that one. What's the next one look like? Uh, not crazy about that one. And let's look at these two here. All right, that's a good one. All right, so we got two nice looking frames. Let's put this one against the wall because it's empty. This one is a nice looking one, but it's empty. So what we're gonna do is take this frame here that isn't all that great on this side, but what we're gonna do is not terrible, so we're gonna use it against the wall. Bees don't usually go crazy against the wall like that. And we need an extra frame over there. So we'll put that on there, but a little bit sticking out here that's bothering us against the wall. So let's scrape that off. 
this would be a good video just for you guys to see what to do when things don't go right. Most people make videos on everything working perfectly. We don't live in a perfect world. All right, let's see what this one looks like. This isn't bad either. Uh, good on this side, not terrible. They might go ahead and draw the rest of this out in the spring. This might be enough to get us by. So let's, uh, let's contemplate putting this one against the wall, that the uh, part that's not pulled out against the wall. All right, now that gives us four frames. So we need one more. And what we're gonna do is organize this in such a way that now we have kind of two empty frames out here. One, two, three, four. That's gonna give us now uh, the ability to put six frames in here. And hopefully, we'll put six frames that look good and have some good resources on them. Now, I'm treating this like we would if we were actually um, working as a new beginner. Like a new beginner, their hive has gone kind of south, and they're going to have to try to get it through the winter. So what we're doing is manipulating frames rather than combining this hive, which I think still is the best method, best effort. Oh, I got to get to work. <laughs> Quit talking, I'm going to get robbed out. But what we want to do is see if we can get this hive through the winter by consolidating frames in a single deep, feeding the heck out of it. All right, you ready? All right, let's see. What do I want to do here? Six frames. And I may change my mind after I start looking in here. So we're over here in the deep, little deep box. Let's change the camera. All right, so, oh yeah, not many bees. I remember this now. All right, let's get the frame right here that doesn't have many bees on it out of the way to give us some manipulation space. This is just so that we can uh, take frames in and out. That's got a little honey on it. Not much, let's remember that one though. All right, here we go. Let's get a little smoke on there. All right, here we go. We want our brood right in the middle. So if we can spot the queen, we want the queen right in the middle. Good, good nectar, bee bread, honey, nectar, bee bread, honey. So that's gonna go right here. Spot number three from the wall. Let's check out our next one. Oh, this is fun. I like doing this. Yep, same thing, resources, good resources. Let's flip it where the most resources, let me show you the resources here. Do you see that? So I'm putting this resource frame again on the brood area. I'm gonna put the brood right in the center. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, another, another good resource frame. Look at that, a lot of nectar today. Look at all that honey, perfect. All right, let's put it right here. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got three frames left. I got three in the box. All right, let's smoke everybody before we get too carried away here. Keep everybody calm down. Might have the queen on this one. Let's take a look. This is the queen that we're not real sure about, but the brood pattern isn't horrible. I know a lot of you were like, oh, that could be a good queen, but she could be a new, she looks kind of like a virgin. And I agree, she is kind of small and she's over there in the corner. Do you see her? Walking up toward the middle of the frame from the corner. Now that we have eyes on her, let's make sure the frame goes down without injuring her. Okay, good. So the queen is on that frame. We've got another one here. Let's see what we got on this frame. See how I'm putting uh, the frame that had brood on it right in the center. Gosh, that looked like the about the only brood frame, wasn't it? This is a resource frame. I'm going to put it here. What's the next frame? Frame full of bees. Look at that. Oh, that's our brood frame. That'd be a perfect spot for the brood right here in the middle. Make sure it goes in easy. It does. Wow, that's not bad at all. Look at that. And we gotta close this up. So what we're gonna do now is put our feeding board on it. And we're gonna feed it. 
Ooh, I just smashed Bobble David head. Bo David Bobblehead. Bobblehead David. All right, let's get the bees out of the way. Very good. All right. I don't see any robbing going on. So we got our feeder board on. Let me go get my feeder jars. We'll put them on here. And uh, then we'll, I'll show you how we can start feeding this hive and see if we can whip it back into shape. Oh, we're not ready to do the feeders just yet because I got to put my uh, small hive beetle traps on. So let's get our beetle traps ready. And uh, I'm going to slide this over here like this to expose a few frames. I thought this hive had a lot more beetles the first time I was in it, but I didn't see as many this time. I spilt a little right there, but it, most of it went back in there. I'm not too worried. So I'm gonna try to put four on here. Uh, remember when you use these beetle traps, you wanna use about that much oil on the bottom quarter inch or so and what we're attempting to do is put enough in here that the bees will chase the beetles down into the oil all right slide this over here and cover that up and we'll put we'll put two on the other side over here they're usually more likely against the wall for me seems like the bees build their own little beetle gels so let's put one about right here. Give time for the bees to get out of there. Oil will kill bees and uh, beetles, but you don't want to kill your bees. There we go. All right, now we got all that in there. There's enough room, because I've got a lip, as you see here, on my feeder boards, so bees can navigate and walk above the actual frames. All right, perfect. Now let's get our feeders on there. I had to keep my jars about 100 yards away from here because the bees were, uh, robber bees were finding these jars pretty quick. All right, look out little bee, get out of there. Try not to spill any. Yep, that's working. Yep, they're already finding these jars here. <laughs> wow, this is a big gallon jar, look at that. I got that from a beekeeper that I bought out, a commercial beekeeper many years ago. Ooh, we gotta get this sealed over quickly. We're not gonna get all these bees out of there. Sorry, but I gotta get them. I gotta minimize my losses right here and get that capped over. Now let's talk about managing frames going into winter. Let's say you do have two deeps and let's say in the bottom you have brood and honey and the top you have brood and honey. Is it really worthwhile for you guys to put all your brood in the bottom and all your honey in the top? My go-to answer on this one is I don't like to change what the bees have done. I feel like bees have arranged their hive the way they want it, and I kind of hate to mess with that. However, if you wanted to, and you wanted to get more brood in the bottom, more honey above them, it's not a bad idea. And you don't have to do it, but listen, if you do it, you can't put all brood down there and all honey in the top. That's not the best scenario. Bees, colonies always have honey, some bee bread, some nectar in each box, even around their brood. So if you're going to do it, and I'm not saying you have to, but if you're going to do it, I think I would put uh, however many frames of brood that you have. I like to go through winter with about four to six this time of the year of, of capped over brood. I would put that brood in the bottom deep, and then I would put next to those four to six frames honey or nectar, whatever it is. Uh, out to the walls. That gives them more food to take care of the brood in that bottom deep. Then you can move more of your honey that was in the bottom deep up and combine it with the other honey frames in the top. Now, let me just stop you. Don't panic. I'm not saying you have to do that. Personally, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to feed my bees, my winter bee kind. I'm feeding them one-to-one -one right now, and I'm going to feed that until the temperature gets uh, below 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the daytime. And then I'm going to put my winter bee kinds on, usually end of December, 1st of January, I'm going to put my winter bee kinds on there to get them through winter. So I don't need them to go up into honey. I need them to go up into my food I'm giving them. And they'll put brood up in there in that top deep or top super if I leave a super on. So that's just an important tip on how you can manipulate your frame, especially 
today, like if with that wheat colony that we're trying to get through the winter. Speaking of getting your bees through the winter, if you're watching this video right now, the day I released it, you're gonna benefit from watching it when I release it because tomorrow night, I'm gonna have a live stream where I'm gonna teach you guys how to get your bees through the winter. We're gonna dive into this a bit more. Watch this live stream. I'll leave a link right here, 7 p.m. Central Time. I hope you'll join me. I always love to see you guys. Beak Squad, get a Beak Squad shirt like this. Wear it at the new North American Bee Expo, uh, January the 4th through 6th with Cayman Reynolds' uh, new conference. I'll be down there speaking with a lot of speakers and I think nearly 2,600 tickets sold already. So if uh, you wanna be a part of Beak Squad, wear the shirt to the conference. We'll get our, we we'll all get together and get a big picture taken. Have a good time seeing each other down there. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be Beak Squad live stream Thursday night, how to get your bees through the winter. Please join me for that. I know some of you have really been wanting our winter bee kinds, but they sold out so quickly. We are selling some winter bee kinds that have no candy in them, just the board. So check out our website, honeybeesonline.com, if you're interested in that. Those may have already sold out. I'm not sure. We had some extras. So if you want to check that out and you're desperately wanting one, uh, be sure and check it out. See if they're still online. Now, for those of you that are watching me because you're interested in starting bees next spring, I've made a video for you guys. I made it a few years ago, but it's still the same information. How to get started is always how to get started. It's like a good book. It just never gets to be a bad book. <laughs> so watch this video, how to start beekeeping in the spring. I'll see you guys over there.